Hey everybody, welcome to another Pro Acoustics Tech Talk. I'm Nathan, and today we're gonna to talk all about the Cambridge uh, Sound Management Active Emitters. All right, so if you followed our videos for a while, uh, you probably are familiar that we've done a couple of videos about the Cambridge Sound Management passive emitters. Today, we're gonna to talk, talk all about the active emitters. So when looking at these, we have to have a masking generator. Uh, it's important to note the QT100, the single zone generator, will not power the active emitters. Um, so in order to use active emitters, gotta have a QTX300 or higher. Uh, so here in front of me, I have the QTX300. Um, this is the three zone sound masking generator, which has a uh, built in uh, masking generator, amplifier, controller, third octave band, um, graphic equalizer, network control, uh, two auxiliary inputs that you can use for paging or background music with the uh, um, active emitters, um, as well as being able to use a combination of active or passive emitters on the same QTX 300. In order to hook those up, you need some more components. We can't just wire straight from the QTX 300 to these emitters. Reason being, these are active. Uh, active meaning built-in amplifier. If you look real, real closely, there's a green light in there. You have to trust me on that. That's to indicate that there is power to this, ampli to this speaker. We have our QTX 300, so instead of just going directly to the emitter, instead we have to go to the um, power injector, uh, which basically the power injector takes the network signal from the QTX 300 into the power injector, out of the power injector, into the speaker. Uh, but before that power can go that route, we also have to have the power supply. This is the power supply that actually powers your power injectors. So basically what's happening here is using these devices, we're taking the network signal out of the uh, QTX 300 into the power injector, using the power supply to power the power injector, which then sends the wattage into the network cable to go into the uh, active emitter. So the question becomes, why do you need the active emitter? Well, the active emitter is basically designed so that you have a higher SPL and a fuller range sound. Uh, basically, power, the powered emitters get louder, are designed for music, and also go a little bit lower in the, uh, um, in the frequency spectrum. So when hooking up this system, you don't just use the network cable simply by itself. You also are gonna need some 14 gauge wire to go from your uh, power supply to your power injector. That actually powers the injector itself. Then the network cable carries the signal to the speaker, uh, which has its built-in amplifier, and then the sound comes out. In order to hook up music to the QTX 300, you basically need to have a music device that can be summed uh, from stereo down to mono. I have an RDL box here that I like to use for this purpose. Uh, it is an active box, so it needs a power supply, but basically I have my Bluetooth receiver going into this box, summing into mono, little bit of gain, out of this box, hardwired into the background music input on uh, the QTX 300, which I have routed to the active emitters. It's really, really important to note, guys, if you want to use the active emitters, you have to log in to the web GUI or software on the QTX 300 in order to basically select that you have active emitters. If you don't, you can have some serious, serious issues because you'll be outputting actually wattage into the rest of this instead of just the signal um, and can cause some serious damages to your speakers. You also don't want to mix and match um, active and passive emitters on the same output. Put. If you send this signal from this power injector into a uh, passive emitter, we're going to have some problems as well. All right, so first let's take a listen to what the masking sounds like. I'm going to crank this up. It might be a little bit louder than what you normally would do in an office masking application, but this way we can at least hear what it sounds like. So that has a lower, richer, fuller sound uh, than the other emitters do, where it has frequency response down closer to about 100 hertz or so. All right, so that's what the masking sounds like. Now let's take a listen to some music. As I mentioned, I basically just have my device paired via Bluetooth into this receiver, into the RDL box, now going into input one on the uh, QTX 300. Lord knows that I've tried to. You said I was the only one. No one likes being like to. You made this mess and left me with the pieces. Nice full range, crisp, full sound. I wanna burn all the bridges between us. All 
right? So, you know, definitely doesn't have the sound of an 18 inch full range subwoofer or anything like that. But keep in mind, guys, this is designed for an office environment uh, where you might need crisp paging as well as crisp uh, full range sound. And that's where the uh, active emitters come in so you can step up the audio quality and also mix and match masking as well as music at the same time. Uh, if you've got any questions about uh, what system makes the most sense for you, definitely reach out to us. We'd love to be of assistance. Check out our link down below. Uh, give us a call and also uh, make sure and click like and follow. Let us know what we can do to help with your next project. Once again, I'm Nathan and uh, we'll see you next time, guys.